Hi, I'm Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted, and this video is of a painting of a potted succulent, and I'm going to go over my steps that I did to paint this in a tutorial for you. If you want to paint along with me, I painted this for a challenge prompt that I found on Instagram from It's Art O'Clock, and she had some great prompts for the month of April 2020, and this one for April 3rd was succulents. So I'm trying out to do as many challenges on Instagram as I can right now just to give myself some ideas because my brain is getting fried from being stuck at home with my little kids. So if you need something to relax and unwind and take your mind off of things, pick up a paintbrush and paint along with me. All right, so I sketched this earlier in the day um, to go with that challenge prompt for succulent and I drew that off a photo I found on Pinterest and that was my inspiration photo um, so i drew this and i'm transferring it over to some Nujabi handmade paper it's size five by seven it's a 300 um, pound papers it's or 200 pound paper excuse me it's i bought this from jerry's artorama um, i just i just like painting this it's got a cool texture and i like the little deckled edge on it so uh, i'm just using a water soluble graphite pencil just to trace my design and this is just an uh, a thin led light pad that i've had for several years um, i bought it on amazon so if you're looking for something like that so I, it's really great for just kind of transferring over a design that you've drawn so that was my succulents I was sketching earlier today and I transferred that one in the pot over to my paper. So I'm going to put that away and get my paints out. Today I'm using a Princeton Velvet Touch Round 6 brush and some Daniel Smith watercolors. If you want to see what paints I have in my collection, I do have a post on my blog linked in my description if you want to see what colors are in my palette right now. I am going to be starting out with some greens for my succulent. Um, so I'm just going to do a very light wash, not completely covering my bristles. And I'm using a little bit of undersea green mixed with a little bit of Hansa yellow light. And I think I had some leftover sap green on my palette there. So I'm kind of just mixing this just to get a light green. And then I want a little bit of a blue in there. So I actually just added a tiny bit of phthalo turquoise to that just to get that I mean, really, any kind of green that you want to mix up is just fine. All right, so I am going to go in each little segment of the succulent that I drew, and you can go back to the, the sketch to reference um, just to give you an idea. I did do some shading on my sketch of so where I want the darker spots to be. So I'm kind of just going around each edge of the little segments. I'm not sure what you call them, if they're petals or segments on succulents, because they're not really a flower, I guess, right? Um, so I'm just going in with this light, pale, yellowy green color that I've made and leaving some white spot for some highlights. This is really loose and fun, so don't need to get too fussy with it. I'm going to be adding a couple more layers on top of this. So if any other places I want to get some darker areas, I'll do that on my next layer. All right, so just thinking about what color I want to do the pot in here. I am going to use, I have a deep scarlet in my palette. I'm going to mix that with some yellow ochre to give myself a terracotta color. So I'm just kind of mixing that up until I get a color that I like. I'm trying to show my palette here on the video and zooming back in on when I was doing the succulent part, just so you can see what colors I'm mixing up. So I'm going to do the lower portion of the pot first. I'll do that. Just do an even wash across that to begin with, and then I'll do some layers on top to do my shadow and just some little details on the pot later. One thing that's interesting about this particular paper is that because it is a handmade paper, some of the fibers in the paper absorb water in a different way. So sometimes you end up with these really neat little textures that are kind of interesting. So depending on what paper you use, you always get a different effect. All right, so I'm just going to very carefully go around my little segments. It's not quite dry all the way yet, but I'm just trying to avoid my green. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in this top and then on my next layer, I'll kind of highlight the, the rim there of the pot. And if you do accidentally 
touch into your green. You can always just take the corner of a paper towel and kind of um, fix any bleeding and then just go back over it after it's dry. That's one of my biggest mistakes in watercolor is my lack of patience and waiting for things to dry so things bleeding together. I, I know it happens all the time to me and I still do it. <laughs> all right, so I wanna do the little shadow coming off the pot and I'm just using some neutral tint that I already had on my palette. And I'm just going to kind of just do almost like a circle shape, but then coming off to the side and I barely used any pigment. I'm just gonna use some water to spread that around and just make a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of my pot. Almost like a semicircle that fades off into the distance. So I'm gonna go back in and do another layer on my little segments. They're mostly dry. I've got my undersea green. I've added a little bit more into to make it darker. And then I'm just gonna reference what I sketched earlier and it's mostly the bottom side of these little segments that needs a little bit darker that had the shadowy area. So I want that to be the darker green. And so I'm using that undersea green to give me that darker color that I just, I just mixed that into what I already had on my palette. And just kind of highlight where the little segments are just to give that a little more definition and then giving them a little shadow along the bottom. And then I will go over this probably one more time here. So if I missed any areas and I wanna highlight any more, I'll just go over it another time. And this will dry a lot lighter than what it looks right now. Once it dries, it gets quite a bit lighter. And I'm going to try and close up some of that white space there, but here I'm making the same mistake I just talked about doing, which is to waiting, not waiting for it to dry. I'm trying to lift that green up that I just smudged in there. And I'll have to take a paper towel and here is a great example of how to fix your mistakes. It's just taking the corner of a paper towel and dabbing that up and then I can go back over that with my terracotta color once that's dry. So I'm actually gonna go and work on that pot some more. This, I have to get that paper towel out of my way that keeps catching on my sweater. All right, so I needed to mix up a little bit more of my deep scarlet and yellow ochre mixture. And I'm just gonna highlight underneath the rim of the pot and going to focus on that side where there would be the darker side where the light is not shining on that pot. And I'm just gonna kind of come down at a curved angle. And just keeping in mind that it will dry a little bit lighter than what you're seeing. And then I'm just kind of making a little bit of that shadowy side on the rim of the pot and just making some lines, quick strokes across there, just to give that a little bit of dimension. All right, now I kind of want to make like some little um, little dots, I guess. So I'm just dabbing my brush in there just to give that because the pot maybe has like some little speckles of imperfections in the pot. So I don't want it to be a perfectly smooth pot. And I'm going to go ahead and dry this really quick because of my impatience and I don't want anything more to bleed. So I'm just gonna dry this before I paint any more layers on. And this is just a heat tool that I've had for years. I had it for scrapbooking. It's from uh, Tim Holtz Ranger Ink. And I just use that to dry my paint now. So you could use a hair dryer or another heat tool if you wanted. All right, so I got my same uh, undersea green, I'm just going to add another layer and kind of just define my little segments again and just add more into those dark shaded areas. And still just leaving tiny bits of white in there to give my highlights. This way it doesn't look so flat, just by adding in shadows and having different shades of green. So that's all I want to add on there. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more in my terracotta color just to darken that up a little bit more. 
add in a little bit more texture to my pot. And this is just using the same color over top. It's just layers on layers of the same color to add dimension. So what's really nice about watercolor is that you can just build on top and it's transparent so you can still see what's underneath. Just kind of dabbing my brush around the top there just to give that some texture. And I'm gonna dry that. And the last part I need to do is just add a little bit of soil in there. In the inside of the pot edge, I have that white space that's left that I left for the soil. And I have some leftover sepia, I think that's how you say it. I'll just fix that where I bled the green a little bit, just add a little bit more there. Um, I had the sepia left over in the middle of my palette there, so I'm just going to use that. I really do try, that's why I have such a messy palette all the time, because I really do try to just keep using the paint that I already have, and sometimes it just gets too messy and I have to clean it off, but so I try to use as much as I can that's still on my palette. So very carefully, I'm just going to add in that dark, dark brown, that sepia color, and just the little dots, just to give the hint of the soil that's in there. And then I'm just gonna give my initials to that. I think that's done. It turned out really, really cute. And like I said, I did this for a challenge prompt on Instagram from It's Art O'Clock. And her challenge is called It's Art O'Clock at Home 2. It's her second month doing this. And for April 3rd, 2020, the prompt was succulents. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's really cute. Um, if you want to see that and some of the other paintings I've been working on, go check it out. Mrs. Hand Painted on Instagram. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming tutorials.